Up next in our learning, let's continue talking about Blade. In one of the previous episodes, we talked about how we can actually output a string by using this notation. So in this episode, let's dive deeper into Blade. Just as a reminder, Blade is just a templating engine that actually comes with Laravel. It's part of Laravel and it is very, very useful. What I want to do in this episode is create a real world example of how you would actually use Blade to compose all of your views. And let me show you what I mean. Let's jump into the directories and let's go into the resources, views, and inside of views right now we have two directories. Let's start completely from scratch. I will actually delete both of these. Let's create a brand new blank file and I will call this file app.blade.php. Again, completely empty file and I do want to open this up in the browser. So let's go ahead and jump into my routes file and create a route that we can work with. So inside of routes, I can go into web.php and we've been using this slash hello. So let's continue doing that and let's jump into the hello controller index method so we can display our new app.blade file. So let's go into app, HTTP, controllers, and then the hello controller. And here is my index method. I will actually clean this up quite a bit and all I want to do is just have a new view. Remember that's the helper function that we use to display any blade view and inside of here I just need to pass in the string of app which again just corresponds to this app.blade file. And just so that we know that this is working let's put an h1 and say working. Great. Now to preview this in the browser in my terminal let's go ahead and boot up PHP artisan surf and now I can visit the website at this address and when I do of course it says that there is no welcome view remember that we erased everything so let's go to that slash hello one more time and sure enough we are working all right so that's a little bit of setup that we needed to do in order to get started with this episode let me close everything up and let's focus in this app.blade file. So typically you will have something like this, right? This is going to be just a simple HTML document and it's going to have a title, which for now we'll say Laravel 6 beginner. And then we'll have some sort of body here. And in here we will put our H1 again and say, welcome to Laravel 6. And maybe in here we will have a paragraph with some additional text about that just a very simple HTML page now by itself this doesn't quite do anything except what you are used to this is just a simple HTML page so let me show you how we can actually make this work the first thing I want to show you is how to actually not have to generate this file over and over for every single page because let's say that let's add a new view now a completely blank document for maybe our about page. So about.blade.php. And now I would have to generate this one more time. But notice how much repetition. This would be called the about us page. And maybe this app will have as our beginners page. So if I want to load this page, I would have to generate all of this code again. Now, luckily for us, Blade is in place. And this is what Blade will do to help us fix it. So what we could do is turn this app.blade into our template. So a template is just a way for us to tell Laravel that this can be extended. In a template, you would designate certain areas where you want the user to be able to customize the text. And one of those areas would be the title. You don't always want the title to be hard coded, but in our about page, we do have a very unique title. So how can we open up this space right here to accept a string? To do that, we use the yield keyword. So we'll say at yield, and then inside of here, we have to pass in a key that we're going to use to actually target it. So let's give this a key of title. And how does this work exactly? I'll go ahead and erase everything. We need to actually tell the about view to take a look at app. And to do that, we say at extends. And what are we extending? Well, we are extending the app. And so now about page will contain everything that is inside app. And in here we could say we're going to have a section with the key of title. And I want that to be about us page. In our controller, 
instead of loading an app, I want to load the about view. So let's jump to the hello controller. And again, I'm going to change from the app view to the about view. And if I hit refresh now, notice the title up here. Notice that it says about us page. And now if we needed to generate another page, let's say the services page, this one will say services. I will change it temporarily here to services. When I hit refresh, notice that it says services up here. And so notice that there is no duplication in these files and we are still getting all of this text to prove it. Let's take a look at the source and sure enough, we are getting all of our markup, but we are just injecting this one section right here. We can continue to do that and generate our entire template. Another place where it would make sense is inside of our body. Inside of our body, we should probably have a section where we can actually pass in the body for this particular page. So we could use the exact same thing again and we could say this yield content area right here and now in the about section we could say we have a new section here and in this one we will call content now as a second string you can't really do that because that wouldn't really make sense and the html would really look kind of funky so instead of passing a second parameter we can use another syntax which is end section so start section and end section and anything in between here will actually just get pushed into this yield section. All right, back in my controller, let's change back to about. And if I hit refresh, notice that we get the exact same thing with the difference being that if I changed here from about, there you go. So this text here is actually coming from the about view. And this is just simply our layout file. That's typically what this file is referred to as. It's just a layout file and typically it is called app.play. So let's continue working in our about. What if I wanted to have maybe some navigation? Let's add a very simple navigation here with some unordered items and let's add two of those. And let's have the first one go to our about page. So slash about, about us. And let's have a second link here that goes to services. So slash services, services as the actual name of the link. And these two routes don't exist yet. So we'll have to create those. Let's go ahead and go into our web.php file and create some new routes. Instead of hello, let's go ahead and make this slash about. And then for now, I will actually change this over to about. And then in here, we'll have the services. And we'll also use services inside our controller. That way we don't have to generate another controller. So now in our controller, let's go ahead and change this over to about. And then let's go ahead and also create one for services. Are we ready to test this out? Let's go back to the browser and let's go to slash about. And now we have these two links. So we have about us and now we have services. Now, of course, services doesn't show anything because we don't have a body section. Let's go ahead and add a content section here to services and we'll say welcome to level six uh, from services. And maybe instead of a paragraph, we'll have some list items with service one, two and three. OK, and there we go. So now we have a very basic two page navigation without any repetition. As a matter of fact, remember that in my app, this is all that I have. And I do have a hello controller to power both of these things. As a quick side note for a little bit more advanced of a lesson here, there is a shortcut for this. If you have a route that has a get method and just hits a controller and inside of that controller, the only thing you're doing is returning a view and you don't need to perform any other actions. There is a shortcut for that. And we could do the following. You could say route, and instead of get, let's do view. So the first parameter remains exactly the same, but the second parameter, we can actually change it to be this view right here. So we can pass just a string of about instead. So about, and then we could do the same thing for the services one. So we'll say view slash services is going to request services.blade.php. So we can actually comment out these two lines. Let me actually bump this down. There we go. So we have two routes and they are just responding with a view.
And if we hit refresh, sure enough, everything is still working exactly the same, except now you don't need a controller. You're not going to use this very often, but it's always good to know a shortcut of how to get just a view displayed in your page right away. So now that we have this particular layout file, another nice feature is that you can extract partials. Imagine that you wanted to extract this into a navigation partial. So I'll show you how to do this. We're going to cut out this navigation out of my app.blade and let's create a new file here and we'll call it maybe nav.blade.php. Inside of this file, I'll go ahead and paste this exact same thing. So how do I bring this navigation blade and just paste it inside of here? To do that, we can use the keyword of include. So we can say at include, and then we pass in the view name. In my case, nav. And now if I hit refresh, I get the exact same thing with just the difference that now my navigation is sitting inside this particular file. So if I needed to use this navigation file somewhere else, all I need to do is just include this one particular navigation blade file. Pretty cool stuff. Let me show you a couple of more things and then we'll call it a day. For this next step, I want to go back to using the actual hello controller. And to do that, I'll bring back these two routes that actually hit the controller. Imagine the following. Imagine that in my services, remember that right now we just have service one, two, and three. Imagine that that was coming from my controller. Perhaps, I have them in a table somewhere in a database. For now, we're going to fake it as just an array. So we'll say services equals, and then we'll have an array with all of my services. And for now, it will just be service one. Let's have service two and service three, and maybe just add service four. So it's a little bit different than we had before. As we learned in the previous episode, if I want to pass this services variable into my view as a second argument here, we can say compact and pass in services. Doing so will give you access to services inside of this blade file right here. So let's go into the services file. And instead of hard coding one, two, and three, how do we actually grab all of them from services? Well, a very useful way of doing this in PHP is to use a for each loop. And for each one that it finds, we want to output a particular HTML section. Let's erase all of this and let's use blade syntax for that. As with every other blade, you're going to start with an at sign and let's say for each. And what are we grabbing? Well, we're grabbing services. Remember, that's what we named it. We named it right here, services. So for each services as service, and this is basic PHP at this point, and then we're going to do end for each. So whatever is in between this and this will actually get outputted for as many times as we have services. So let's add a new list item here. And all I will do is just output out service. And if we hit refresh and go to services, there we go. So we have services one, two, three, four. So that's a great and easy way to actually pass in a list of data from our database and then catch it inside of our view and output each one. How cool is that? But what if there was no services? Typically for this, you'll have to check if services is actually available because what if services was completely empty? Imagine this example. Now when we hit refresh, we don't get anything, but it would be nice to be able to tell the user, we don't have any services currently listed, but come back later and check out our services. So to achieve this, we can change for each just a little bit. Instead of for each, let's use for else. And the way that for else works is it allows you to add a new section here called at empty. And then we'll end for else. So with this small change, whatever is between this section and this section will get outputted if there are no services. Here we can have a list item for say, no services available. Now, when we hit refresh, we have no services available. But if we do add a service, let's add a cool service, and then maybe another cool service. Now we get that instead. So it's a very simple way of taking a list. And if it's empty, we'll have a section for it. So that's what that's saying. Say if my list that I'm giving you up here, if that's empty, go ahead and output this section right here. 
And if it's not empty, then let's go ahead and do the following for each one. I hope you see the power in Blade. And what I want you to do is create as real world of an example as you can using all of these tools that I showed you with Blade. And then when you're feeling comfortable with that, let's move on to the next lesson.